Brian. It's so great to be here on a beautiful day. It's actually the end of November to 60 degrees, so we get to come out and be in the park into the common and talk about the master plan that we worked on for about three years with 10,000 people gave us input. And uh, it's very exciting that we have been implementing things. I'd love you to talk a little bit about those early action projects, and that's why we're where we are. Sure. Thank you for picking today and not yesterday. I'm glad it's not 40 degrees. We're not bundled up here. We'll soon be having our tree arrival uh, before you know it. So um, I think this plan, the exciting thing is that it's all about connections and how what enhancements we can make on this almost four century old park. You know, it is historic. We are being intentional, but we're giving more opportunities. So focusing on the accessibility, making sure there's more diversifying the options, making sure there's more density with the trees throughout the town. These are all important things in our maintenance fund that we continue to do year in and year out to do stuff. But starting off with our successful collaboration on the Shaw 54th, and now figuring out a way that for 400 years, people have not been able to enter from that side of the park if they have a disability. People of all abilities cannot get into that uh, whole section of the park without going down Beacon Street or Park Street. So starting off with a ramp, so people can now see different areas of the park they may not have been able to see, explore different areas. Um, so that's an exciting first step that we'll be making. And being here, right in front of the Tadpole Playground, we've had many different ideas in this park, and being something that was built in 2002, it's held up pretty well over the past 21 years, but should we expand it? And how can we expand it? And this master plan gave us a way to really put these buildings, set the foundation and building blocks in place, but now is the time for these robust communications and conversations to decide what people want to see, what features go on a playground like this. Do we need water feature? Do we need water play right next to the frog park? Maybe we do, maybe we don't, but that's stuff we want to hear. So we design this park and playground that has a thousand people in it, sometimes on its busiest days coming through here. How do we do it? So it's exciting work. It's ongoing. It may seem slow, but we're excited to have this whole community process and hear what people want. We have this guide now leading us through the next 20 years, the next 25 years, maybe. But it really is every three, four, five years having these conversations, see what's changed, to see if this is still what people want, if this is the right direction we should still go. So I'm excited about those two projects being the first two that we uh, dig in on. Right. And another one that we did, which is a pilot project, which is also exciting because the Boylston uh, Tremont zone, that entrance has been underperforming, as we like to say. It's been really a no man's, no, no person's land. So putting the beer garden there, a seasonal beer garden, 18 to 20,000 people in one coming, they enjoy that place. We, we really proved to the public and to ourselves that that was a successful engagement and people were drawn to that and we're gonna do it some more. You know, just we, we've learned from that because we were trying to think about what can we do to turn that entrance around. All of our entrances, they've changed mm -hmm. over history. They have a lot less, um, architectural elements, some of those entrances aren't even clear with their entrances. People often don't know when they go from the garden into the common that they're going into a different park. So that's one of the major entrances where 40,000 people a day walk just past here, the mayor's walk, and that's one of our high priority projects. To improve that walk, to make it a wonderful event for people to be moving along there, to improve something that gets uh, beat to, to death <laughs> by, by a lot of people loving this park too much in some ways. And, and that's what we're going to work on the next pieces will be those kinds of high priority projects. Another example of a high priority project is the athletic fields. How can we make those multi-use? The exciting thing for us, or me in particular, is bringing basketball courts to the common to let people know to play basketball, this is your part you belong here. So mm -hmm. incorporating tennis but adding basketball will be very exciting. And diversifying that whole sports collection over there because pickleball is big right now. Five years from now, is pickleball still going to be the thing people want, or will that be taking over tennis courts or just overlaid on the tennis courts? And we're seeing soccer growth throughout the city like crazy. That is the one sport that we have waiting list for our permitting system. You know, on these multi-purpose fields, having the large enough space. A lot of our parks throughout the city may be pocket parks, but don't have that one acre of space needed to really have a, a field that you can play soccer on. Yeah. So yeah. as we try to diversify and grow and stay current with the times in such a historic park, uh, and make it all work. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. what's important. I will say on the beer garden activation, having these welcoming entrances, having things that invite people into the park. I mean, we always say the more positive activity yeah. pushes that negative activity yeah. away. And we've actually seen that. We've seen, you know, negative activity take place on those benches outside of the windows of Emerson College as they overlook. And now seeing live music with a Mexican owned food truck, a beer garden in there, just seeing that activated. And how can we expand that to maybe 
more enhanced concessions throughout the parks and more food opportunities throughout the parks. And, you know, how do we really have opportunities for our four-legged friends, you know, throughout the parks in certain areas. So it really is a plan of opportunities. Well, that's great because we have these destinations. People don't even really know about them. One of which is the visitor center behind us. And maybe people don't even know it's the visitor center. So what the plan did was talk about movement through circulation because a lot of those 40,000 people are moving from one part of the park to the other. But we want to encourage them to stop, whether it's a beer garden or an enhanced botanical playground or an expanded visitor center with a plaza at the outside where people can really enjoy themselves at that visitor center. It's the place where tourists come to learn about Boston. It's their first stop. Brewer Plaza, a decade ago, we enhanced that. We want to continue to claim that and activate it more. And there are some areas that are that are challenging, and that's one of them. So we'll continue to activate that more. And I just want to say that the partnership has been so important to us, important to the park, that we, you know, we need both of us. We need your perspective, we need our perspective, we need the public's perspective. Ten thousand voices made this this park, made this park plan. And we heard from a lot of people that what they really love about the park is the green. So working really hard to keep the turf resilient and the trees healthy and all of those basic things that people in a very busy and, you know, dense and, you know, crazy life of an urban dweller to be able to just come in here and enjoy themselves and relax and, and meet a friend. And one other thing that we've continuously heard, in addition to loving the green, the need for public restrooms throughout this, you know, this park. It's something that the friends took on, got grant funding for, yeah. and has been very successful with, and we wish they'll stay with it for another 10 years <laughs> as we continue. Um, but, you know, finding opportunities with the Visitor Information Center um, as we expand it, you know, permanent restrooms on site, and ways to do it and keep that going. You know, it's something that we easily overlook, but as more and more people are spending hours or their whole day in parks, you know, having that basic necessity yeah. available for people yeah. to use. That's we, people hear that from around the country, that urban parks do not have restrooms. They are that basic human need. You say, I'm really particularly excited about that building at the mid-block crossing in Charles Street when you come into the common to have a permanent bathroom facility and a place to store recreational facilities and maybe an administrator that we talk about having because this park is the most, you know, it's better than I do, that it's the most intensively permanent park in the city most intensively used part, and it needs dedicated eyes and ears to understand what's going on, be able to make the maintenance and management the best possible. And I think having a lot of these activations, whether it be uh, enhanced concessions, beer gun types, ways to bring more revenue in, both for ourselves and our partners, so we can make improvements in this very park. You know, it's a way way to do that. And when you find the right fit, that works. And, you know, it's bringing that in. It's great. People don't mind having that amenity in the park, especially when they know that it's going back into the park to make improvements. Well, some of these projects are big. You know, the one behind us, the visitor center, we hope we can find partners. The one on this side behind us, the Frog Pond, that's a massive and wonderful project. $17 million in last year's dollars. So we're going to want to, and we're going to need to find other funding partners and people that are excited to come and join in this work and help us do this. People that want to see their names on these buildings. That's the kind of donors that we want. But put them on the inside <laughs> of the building, won't we, Ryan? <laughs> we'll find the appropriate way to honor their contribution. That's right. That's, a, that's $17 million behind us. That's a lot of money. That would be three quarters of the money we got from Winston Square. And as one of the designs that's currently proposed, which was quoted out of a second story restaurant, with everything in there, yes. three years ago, our prices were around $24 million. Yeah. So if yeah. we're in today's, oh, no. by the time we get to these projects, we're probably looking at a $30 million yeah. all-in project with everything right. around the Frog Pond Pavilion uh, and the actual Frog Pond itself. It will be transformational, and it's worth shooting for the stars on that one. So. so thank you so much for coming and spending a lot of time with me talking about this. We're very excited. We're going to keep the public posted as we move forward. And as everyone needs to understand with public work, it starts and stops, and there needs to be, you know, time where we get feedback, and then there's time when you go out to bid and it just change designs if we yeah, need to all yeah. the work. But the core is that they do happen with robust community conversations. This was the blueprint. This is the way moving forward. It has a lot of magnet destinations, has a lot of placemakers, but really doesn't get into those finite details for each. So that's why it's important for people to engage in these Absolutely. robust communications to really sit down and give us their feedback. What do they see? The people that use this park are our eyes and ears. We may be in it several times a week, but they are in it every day, whether they're walking their dog or walking to work or using the park for respite, relaxation, whatever it may be. 
this is what we need to hear because this is how we're really going to make the future of this 400 year old park. That's why we call them stakeholders because they have a real stake in this place. It's the People's Park. We're working for them. So thank you. Thank you very much. You too.